दे देंगे यार तुम ये भी ले लीजिए So today we are going to discuss the very important topic of our physiology, uh, and it's also related to that of uh, pathology. So don't consider the subjects; just go through the concept. First of all, here is written something: edema. Edema is the accumulation of fluid inside that into the interstitial space or the into the interstitial. So accumulation of <coughs> just write the. thing accumulation of accumulation of fluid in interstitial interstitium this is the very basic thing which an average doctor knows and i want you people not only just Think that accumulation of the interstitial, uh, accumulation of the fluid in the interstitium is called as edema. It's not the thing. You have to go in each and every step. How it occurs, why it happens, and what are the causes and what's the treatment of it. So first of all, I let me explain you about the body compartments, about what, how much fluid is present inside our body. So uh, I must ask a question from Bilal Ahmed. So what is your weight? I think ninety three. Ninety three. And what's yours? One zero four. <laughs> no, <laughs> you cannot have that much weight. So uh, let's suppose that we have got a man on the fifty three. Here we have we have got the man. Okay, this is a man. So how much fluid would be inside him? it it may he must have the dry weight and also he must have the fluid inside his body so let's consider the thing that this man has got the 72 kg weight which would be an average weight of the boys or you know the normal human being sitting over here so let's suppose that he has got the 72 kg weight how what do you mean by it has got the uh, so many cells trillions of cells inside his body So, how much fluid or how much water would be present inside his body? Seventy percent. Seventy percent? Yes. No, it's like to some extent it's it's fair enough. But uh, uh, about this calculation, seventy-two kg. What do you, what you people think that he must have this this kg water? Although we consider water or the fluids in the letters, uh, just tell me for the sake of consequence that how much fluid would be present inside his body? Oh, okay. Now listen, Forty. five liter would be. the blood volume okay and there would be like every day there is a loss of 1.5 <coughs> like 0.8 liters so how much fluid would be there you people consider about that don't tell me something very or very fishy so that i could Get a heart attack at this moment. Forty-two kg. Forty-two kg. Yes. Water. Fluid. Okay. Near to some extent, I can say um, this is right. So let me explain you in a better way how we divide the fluid compartments, how we divide that of the interstitial space, and how we divide the other stuff. So let's suppose we have got the total body weight. Total body weight. How much? Seventy-two. He has got the seventy-two kg body weight, and we have to consider two things: that he has got the uh, dry weight, which is not the fluid, and other is the fluid. Okay, so it would be the lean body mass, and here would be the total body fluid, which is. How much total body? Uh, how much fluid is present in the whole body? Okay, and sixty percent, remaining sixty percent, and in that sixty percent, we will say that there is there are two third of intracellular and one third of the extracellular, and we get about by this calculation, we get twenty eight liters in the intracellular in the cells and. In this 
टू के जी वेव फॉर द फोर्टीन लीटर आउटसाइड द सेल क्लियर क्लियर एवर क्वेश्चन यू गिव मी आस्क फोर्टी टू लीटर फोर्टी टू लीटर फोर्टी टू लीटर लोडिंग प्रेजेंट डबल बॉडी बी एस एक्चुअली ट्वेंटी एट एंड फोर्टीन यस फोर्टी टू सो फोर्टी टू लीटर इज नॉट इन अवर बॉडी this man this man's body so when we can say 42 is the fluid then 30 must be lean body weight 30 kg must be lean body weight okay this would be the dry mass of that <coughs> particular person so now moving on you people must have to know about some of the intracellular extracellular compartments for example this is intracellular compartment afterwards we will say that this is the extracellular compartment this is extra cellular compartment and this is intracellular compartment in that of the intracellular compartments we have got the cations we have got the anions we have got the cations and we have got the anions what kind of cations and what kind of anions there are cation means positive charges so what are the positive charges present inside our cell सोडियम पोटेशियम पोटेशियम कैल्शियम एंड व्हाट आर द एनाइन्स प्रेजेंट ओवर देयर क्लोरीन यस इट कुड बी क्लोरीन इट कुड बी बाइकार्बोनेट इट कुड बी प्रोटीन्स प्रोटीन्स आर नेगेटिवली चार्ज सो दीज आर द थिंग्स व्हिच आर प्रेजेंट ओवर देयर इन द इंडस्ट्रीशियल स्पेस एंड इन द इन द इंटरसेलर सॉरी इन द इंटरसेलर कंपार्टमेंट and in the extra cellular compartment you people now must have to know that extra cellular it has been divided into two further compartments which could be plasma and which could be interstitial interstitial fluid i already told you that this is the vessel which is in which inside which is present plasma and the plasma proteins and all the stuff like that which is present inside there and afterwards we are going to know that there is the interstitium in the interstitium there is the fluid which is not present in the cell it is outside the cell we can say this is the extra cellular fluid present over there so extra cellular has been divided into two compartments so you people must also know that this is divided into for the two compartments okay yes. so this is so easy to go on further what happens is we have got this here we have got the plasma or we, here we have got the interstitial fluid okay in the plasma we have got sodium we have got um water we have got chlorine we have got uh, sodium chloride i must write it together okay there is and there are plasma proteins what are plasma proteins plasma proteins are actually the proteins present in our inside our vessel inside our body inside our body is vessel or the capillaries or the arteries or the veins that hold the fluid from the thing of oozing out if there are no plasma proteins then this water can then this fluid can ooze out over here what they will do they will just make the endothelial gaps if they make the endothelial gas what happens is this blood will go into the interstitium and if the blood goes to the 
indecision not the blood because okay there is plasma and there is blood what is the in there there is blood there is plasma there is interstitial fluid what is the difference between these three let me tell you what is the plasma and interstitial difference interstitial fluid the both are fluids in plasma we have got the plasma proteins plus fluid but in the interstitium we don't have the plasma proteins as i described you here that in the interstitial fluid plasma proteins cannot go out so actually interstitial fluid is no protein fluid this is exactly the plasma for example this is the plasma this was the plasma it goes into the interstitial it must be called plasma why we are saying that this is not the plasma it's the interstitial fluid we are calling this the interstitial fluid cause it doesn't have the proteins for only, example only fluid will pass through yeah only fluid will pass and proteins will stay inside that of the vessel inside that of the capillary so this is the thing which i'm trying to tell that this would be the interstitial fluid okay yes this is the interstitial fluid to some extent what will happen that interstitial fluid will accumulate and the you know the lymphatics will take them okay and this compartment will be stay normal but what happens if there will be the blockage if there is the blockage of the lymphatics then you must be, you must have to know that this fluid will be accumulated 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 so much that there would be edema so accumulation of the fluid in the interstitial space is called as edema so whole that stuff is to just describe what is actually edema now for example here we say that there is there are the lymphatics we should drain what let drain this um, uh, we can say the interstitial fluid there are so many condition in which we can say that interstitial space has been so filled that it can cause edema first is that lymphatics obstruction then also the what will happen that there will be edema okay secondly if there is increased vascular permeability and how it happens vascular permeability happens by endothelial gaps like his like his to mean body can in the necrotic part and stuff like that so there would be vascular permeability or there is increased hydrostatic pressure what is hydrostatic pressure hydro means water and static means regulation uh, and the pressure is the pressure so if there is increased pressure increased flow at from this area there is increased flow increased flow there is increased flow there is increased heart rate and there is increased arterial pressure there is increased uh, venous pressure then what will happen that the, there is there is so much fluid that it will ooze out it will go out then this is also another condition in which edema happens okay now the second thing which we are saying is uh, hydrostatic pressure and if there is low on cortic pressure fourth is low on cortic pressure low on cortic pressure means that there are on co on there is on cortic pressure over here okay on cortic pressure means that how much so we were talking about edema but to describe
describe the edema, you know, we have to first think about what are the body fluid compartments. What is, what are the uh, distribution of the, what is the distribution of the fluid inside our body. I already told you that um, inside our body, how much like fluid is present? 60%. For example, this is the body and it has been distributed in two things. Okay, let me write it in another way so that you can easily examine the thing. Body, total body weight, let me write it. Total body weight, this is just the review of the previous lecture which I, then it is divided into lean body mass and it's divided into total body fluid. Okay, this was the simple thing. And lean body mass was about 40%. And total body fluid was about 60%. Okay, this was the general thing which I wanted you people to know. Afterwards, we decided, uh, you know, subdivided this total body fluid into two components: intracellular and extracellular. Extra cellular. This was the thing. In the intracellular thing, we we described there were positive charges, there were negative charges, there were anions, there were cations. There were proteins, there were energy derivatives. And what are the energy derivatives? Don't tell me that you don't know. I want you people to answer. Energy der derivatives means ATP, ADP, and AMP. AMP. And the stuff like that, you know the whole thing. And extracellular was further divided into two compartments. Plasma, plasma and interstitium. This was the interstitial, not in the interstitial, this was interstitial fluid. Okay, you get it? How much percentage was extracellular and how much percentage was intracellular? Extracellular was of 1 by 3. One third. And there was 2 by 3. Like 2 third of the um, uh, fluid was present into that of the intracellular and 1 third of the uh, fluid was present in the extracellular compartment. Okay. And extracellular we divided into the plasma and the interstitial fluid. Into that of the interstitial fluid. What we say that it is about 3 by 4th and its plasma is 1 by 4th part of that particular fluid. This is the basic thing which is present over here. Now, I want you to know uh, from you people that what is the difference between the interstitial fluid and the plasma? Plasma contains everything and interstitial fluid contains just fluid, not like... Plasma proteins or exactly proteins. what the difference between is two that they are equal but what the difference is the difference is just only thing that plasma proteins are present only in plasma, plasma not present in the interstitium for example we have got the albumin we have got the Fibrinogen, globulins, and we have got the globulins. And in the last lecture, one of the students asked about which protein, like, uh, do they have got any mechanism so that interstitial fluid in the interstitium, in the interstitial fluid, we got some kind of proteins. So they were and they were low molecular weight proteins, like the degradation of that of the albumin. Present over here. 
we have to know that here there are the endothelial gaps present over here okay this will lead to the this will lead to what this will lead this, this plasma fluid going to the interstitium here i must give have to give you the example for example this is the albumin and this holds this water or any particular substance when this will cross this particular thing will cross this membrane like this it will come inside this thing this is for a while this is the fluid don't think it as a particle what will happen to this albumin this albumin will stay here okay and it will not go into that of the interstitium so this particular fluid these are the same things you know this is the same thing but what is the difference that the interstitial fluid um, does not have got the plasma proteins okay so this is the protein albumin or the globulin or anything you know it, it is a protein plasma protein which is present inside that of the inside that of the vessel okay what happens is when it goes out it's okay it's, it becomes a part of the interstitium now we cannot call it the plasma fluid we can call it as the interstitial fluid okay and what does interstitial fluid how the interstitial fluid goes you know if there is there is water uh, or there is fluid we can say it goes it comes it goes and comes like here from this side it goes from that side it goes out so what happens is that what is the use of this interstitial fluid how it goes out it goes out by lymphatic, lymphatic system so lymphatic system in which it drain it drains oh. right subclavian vein oh. okay it happens over there so what happens is what is the use of this interstitium the use of this interstitium is that if there is excessive blood which goes out which cannot be in that of the you know the vessel it exudate out it happens like for example if you take any kind of uh, uh, like how can you say um, okay just think about that this is some this is the vessel okay this is a hard material so it can it will not let the let the fluid come out but for example if it is like you know elastic substance or it has some kind of uh, endothelial cells inside it so what happens is a little little fluid every time it will come out okay so that the fluid which will come out is the interstitial fluid and the fluid inside that of the vessel will be the plasma okay now for example let me clear you one thing this is the this is the top it looks like okay what happens is inside this this is the blood the blood and what happens is this is these are the substances present inside that of the blood which are the b cells t cells you know the rbcs and all the blood cells present over here and all the blood cells uh, present over there there would be also red blood cells okay and this for example these you know um, black color substances are plasma proteins okay you get it and what this red color would present rbcs okay and what this would be present this could be lymphocytes this could be uh, you know white blood cells and anything you know present over there there are so many things present in the blood there there are proteins there are enzymes and you know all the things but the the thing which i want you people to know here is what is the interstitium for example in this just the same jar we put some kind of hair sieve you know the sieve old people not old people even now we are using sieve to stain you know or for example when we um, make a tea a cup of tea you have to do this stuff you make the tea and after that you have to remove that tea particles so you sieve that tea so it's just like interstitium. it is interstitium okay this is the general thing 
it is you know permeable to sodium it is permeable to chloride it is permeable to uh, water but it is not permeable to plasma proteins so you now you must have to know that the plasma proteins cannot go out this is this very basic and the very general thing which i want you uh, to remember now moving on further we have to know about something okay let me ask you a question there was a thing that uh, which uh, there is total body weight um, we have got uh, the total body weight uh, total body fluid we have got the lean body mass and the stuff like that i want you to know that females have more water or the men have more water inside their bodies men have men have more water okay so what's the reason that men have got the more water Because their tissues or cells, muscles. Which tissues. which which tissue? Muscles. muscles. Girls have more muscles. No boys have. So what is the reason that we are saying that girls have got uh, boys have got the more water? Because they work. They work. They need more water. Girls also work. Not that much. Okay. Let me tell you about the reason that is in the females adipose tissues are increased. adipose tissues are increased in females this is due to the reason that females have got the breasts females have got the wider um, like gluteal regions so they have got the increased adipose tissues it means that they have got the increased fat, fat cells. cells so fat cells don't need water normal cells need water and in men there are all the normal cells Like very little fat, there are also fat cells. It doesn't mean that they don't, they have not got the fat cells. They also get the fat cells, but females have got the more fat cells. That's why we can say that men have got the more water, females have got the less water. This was the thing. Extracellularly, I told you about which are the main components of the extracellular fluid. Hi, tell me, hurry up. What? Extracellular fluid. Which are the main components of extracellular fluid? Air in the plasma. In the extracellular fluid, part of that of the plasma, sodium, so, yeah, chloride, water, water, water plasma and plasma proteins, and also some bicarbonates. I forgot to write the bicarbonates. You have to write H two O two. They can also go here. Okay. Uh, so, what are the extracellular compartments in the interstitial fluid? There are bicarbonates, there is sodium, chloride, there is water, except everything except plasma. Okay. Now, plasma from yes. proteins. This was the uh, important thing which I want you uh, to remember. So. capillary network we have got something called for example this has this is uh, along with that of the capillary network this extracellular fluid is along with the capillary network in this capillary network i want to um, i want to tell you people that this is a permeable membrane to the cations and anions in some extent that there are some kind of uh, sodium chloride like uh, water these can pass but this cannot lead the plasma proteins to go there so it would be semi permeable okay and it does not stop so, uh, sodium and chloride semi permeable to plasma proteins semi no no not semi permeable to plasma proteins it is actually semi permeable it means semi permeable means that it leads some substances to go oh, and it stops some sub substances okay so high molecules high weight molecules high weight molecules even yeah. cannot uh, cross over there so there is a condition what happens if we drink more water okay if we drink more and more water where the water will flow hmm? here we have got more water from outside for example it is a condition in which we have got uh, we are drinking more and more water and what happens to that of the extracellular compartment it will extracellular compartment will increase increase okay but we have to get to know that if there is high amount of water in this whole area okay water is permeable water can go this this and this anyway so water is present so much here this is this this becomes hypo osmolar so let me tell you about the hypo uh, osmolar hypo osmolar hypo osmolar yes So this was the reason to 
थिंग वॉज यार क्या है इसमें बंद करो ना गधे प्रफुल गधे ओके सो दिस इज द रीजन दैट वेर एवर द सोडियम गोज वॉटर फॉलोज इन दिस कंडीशन ऑल्सो देर वॉज यू नो देर वॉज इंक्रीज कंसेंट्रेशन ऑफ वॉटर ओवर देर दे हैव टू फॉलो दैट ऑफ द दिस सोडियम ओके लेट मी मेक इट वेरी सिंपलर फॉर यू पीपल फॉर एग्जाम्पल remove all the things just remember one thing which is water okay when water comes inside here it can flow you know it can it's the same compartment for water but what happens is it will flow over there so this firstly this compartment the extracellular fluid extracellular volume will increase okay and afterwards the intracellular volume will also increase whenever there is extracellular compartment there is intracellular compartment they both have to compromise in such a way that they will equalize they want to equalize whatever the concentration is inside they want outside whatever the concentration is outside they want inside so to um, just you know equalize the concentration the water flow goes over there but what how what is the osmolarity osmolarity means osmolarity Or, yes, exactly. It's the solute concentration. It's the number of active particles present inside that of the blood or the fluid solution. or the solution, whatever you can want to say. It's the number of active particles present inside of that of the fluid. So, what would be the osmolarity? We just gave the water. We didn't give. We didn't give. Sodium. Sodium. So, what would be the concentration? What would be the osmolarity? Decrease. Osmolarity will definitely decrease. Decrease. So, just think that this these are two two ways. This is the volume volume side, and this is the osmolarity. Just put this thing in the graph. So, what we can say that this will this will decrease. You getting the point? this is the osmolarity has been decreased and in the same way this will also decrease in the intracellular compartment so what we can say that there would be extensive water inside that of uh, our body there would be increased volume you know in volume has been increased here but here volume also increases due to the reason that water has been followed by sodium so imagine now this condition that now the new graph after taking water what we say that this is this one that osmolarity decreases cause we didn't give the solutes okay okay and what happens to this is that volume also increases You get my point. If you are good confused, you can ask. Of both side, even uh, intracellular. Okay, okay, this is the reason. This is this is just a normal, you know, compartment. Compartment. We have got the semi-permeable membrane. If we put water, it was just like this at the at this moment. If we put water, water will come and it will increase this way. But after some times, what will happen? This will increase and this will this will decrease to such extent that they both become equal. You know, you are getting the normal phenomena. Yeah, yes. What I want to say. So this is the reason what what I applied over here that this volume also increases, and here the volume also increases. But the osmolarity. For example, there were three particles here, three particles here. Okay. Firstly, we can we said that there were less less solvent and less solute. So we can say there there would be ratio of one by one, one by one, and here also one by one. After adding water, water, what would happen to this one water? Two by one, and here also. Volume increase. Okay. 
क्या चीज हम देखते हैं एक शॉर्ट फिल्म फ्रेंड्स के बोल में चेंजिंग उसमें देखी जाती है It means that you the solutes which are present in a fluid. So hypo means less decreased. Hyper means increased. And iso means same. 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 So whenever someone asks you about the hyper or smaller, it means solutes has been increased. Osmolarity has been increased, but volume has been decreased. Hyper or smaller? What? Yeah, in hyper or smaller? It's depending on the condition. I will tell you about the high volumetric expansion and contraction. It's just about the general thing. So hypo or smaller means that osmolarity has been increased, but volume decreased. Hypo. Osmolarity has been decreased for hypo or smaller. Hypo, yes. Okay, and the water or the solvent has been increased. In iso means it's the same. Os it's the uh, normal thing which uh, we were uh, discussing. But here, next moving on. I told you about the normal conditions and the stuff. How much fluid is present in that of the extra cellular? How much? One third. And how much is present in the plasma? In plasma? Hmm. In plasma. Two thirds. One fourth. And three fourths. Oh. Three fourths in the interstitium. Oh. oh So, how much concentration of that of the extra cellular sodium is there? Okay, uh, just do tell me about which which is the uh, like how much potassium is present inside that of the cell? Because I want you people to know that if sodium is has been increased in the cell is present in a large amount or potassium is present? Sodium inside the cell. Inside the cell, potassium is high. Cause potassium is the, the cell is the bag of potassium. Potassium. So sodium mm -hmm. is increased outside. outside. Fair enough. Okay. And uh, now along with that, we also have to know how much is the total body fluid. Sixty percent. Okay. This was the thing. Weight. Um, we have uh, cleaned our stuff now. Next, moving on. I want you people to just think the two basic things. This was the intracellular compartment, compartment and here was extracellular compartment. You remember here is the volume. In this way, there is volume. This way there is volume, there is personality. Don't need to mention it? No. But still, I want to, I want to mention. And osmolarity. For example, what we give? We give the isotonic solution. Just the simplest, start from the simplest thing. If we give the uh, uh, isotonic thing, we say, what we will do? That we will give the water, we will give the sodium. This is the bag of that fluid. What would happen to that of the volume? If we give water and sodium both, isotonic solution, what would happen to that of the extracellular compartment? Its volume increased. So we can say that its volume and increases. Both are volume increases in the extracellular or in the intracellular. In extracellular. What? Extracellular. In the extracellular. Just think about the reason that there is isotonic volumetric. For example, this. This is isotonic uh, volumetric expansion. Expansion. 
Nuțenii ale rupțeau. Nu-i dă nici urmă. E mică de aici apie. So, what, what I was telling about, it was this osmolarity decreases. You observe that volume has been increased and, you know, here the intercellular fluid also increases because wherever the water is present, you know, sodium, wherever the sodium is present, water will follow. Wherever the sodium is present, water will follow. Okay? Because the boys attract the girls. So, no, girls actually are girls are attracted by the boys. So, This is the reason that water follows to that this place. Get it? Yes. What is the condition in which we can say A can here? We also have to uh, mention one thing that what would happen to that of the RBC? What would happen to that of the RBC? RBC, whenever there is, you know, this is also a cell. Don't grab the thing. Just think, this is also the cell. This is also a cell. Yes. Intercellular fluid. So what has happened to that? Volume? Volume increase. So what would happen to the RBC? Swell up. It would swell up. Okay. Even the hematocrit decreases, but the RBC will? Swell Okay. What is the condition in which, the way I told you, normal cell in the hair, I told you dilemma vomiting. What is the normal condition in which there is, you can see, there is increased water. There is S-I-A-D-H. At least we will also um, uh, know about the swell increase in the uh, ADH. ADH means endosterone. Okay? Antidiuretic hormone. Endosterone is other things which retain the sodium. We will uh, discuss in the next case. But here there is severe increase in the ADH. And what was the work of ADH? The ADH was retaining the water. It was not letting, for example, here was in the last part of the collecting uh, tubule, for example, there was ADH working on that. So it, it was retaining water. So that urine could not get the water. They, it has it absorbs, reabsorbs the water. When there is severe increase in ADH, what would you think? That volume increases or decreases? Volume will increase. Increase. Because you have in, you have taken the water and you will send it to the body. Okay. So volume of the body will increase. But you didn't retain here the sodium. Okay, sodium is normal, which which was already present. So osmolarity decreases and volume Increase. increases. This is one condition in which we say there is a hypotonic volume expansion. Whenever you get the question, just remember one thing. You just immediately have to draw this graph which I told you. By drawing the lines, you will get to know which is the answer of that question. Okay? okay. You can do it? Now, next, moving on. We will consider another example. Now you have to tell me what I am trying to draw here. What would be this condition? ICF, ECF. Here would be hypotonic. Volume, volume, contraction. It means that the volume of the fluid will be decreased, decreased than the normal. Okay? And what would happen to the osmolarity? First, let me write you the thing. That this is hypotonic. What what would be the um, like what we can say that what would osmolarity. what would happen to the osmolarity? Decrease. In the hypotonic solution, I told you many times that osmolarity it will decrease. There is isovolumetric contraction. contraction, so there is decrease in the osmolarity for sure. Okay, there is hematocrit. What is about hematocrit and volume? Volume decrease. Hematocrit. What is about the blood pressure and what is about the osmolarity? Osmolarity also. What would happen?
open to the hematocrit decreased no no sorry Decrease. increased and volume let me write the parameters and blood pressure and the osmolarity don't look at the books just answer me by the concept hematocrit will increase because hematocrit would be the same in that but due to the reason that volume has been decreased it looks like hematocrit has been increased increased volume decrease blood pressure decrease osmolarity remain cause isotonic no, solution in isotonic solution osmolarity remains the same so both have the condition just remember this isovolumetric contraction and isovolumetric expansion in expansion it extends and in isovolumetric contraction it what happens is to it volume decreases volume decreases okay you get it yes for example in isotonic solution we say isotonic contraction there are certain clinical clinical examples for example in diarrhea what happens in diarrhea vomiting loss of water there is a loss of water along with that of the solutes yes cause diarrhea is the you know fluid fluid material along with the solutes along with the water yes they, this is lost and in the vomiting there is also the same thing water is lost body fluid is lost and the solutes are also lost so diarrhea and in vomiting we say that there is the isovolumetric contraction done now here we can say what is about the isovolume uh, isotonic expansion we take water or normal saline normal saline is of equal amount of sodium and water osmolarity of the sodium and water are equal for example according to 300 millimole per equal per liter we will give this saline normal saline to this like we have given this normal saline to the uh, uh, to the isovolumetric expansion to become the isovolumetric expansion okay this was expansion this was contraction contraction isovolumetric you get it or still confused we will give uh, give matlab normal saline to uh, isovolumetric expansion no if so i gave on. this normal saline to this compartment for example i am normal but i took normal saline What would happen to my extra cellular fluid? It will increase. Hmm. This is the normal person. We are giving. We are trying to give these all conditions for first normal. The second red dotted lines are the condition when we give something to that. For example, here we gave isotonic solution. For example, water or the normal saline. We gave hmm. here isotonic. This would be the isotonic solution. Water along with the salt. Equal concentration, or um, normal saline, we can say. So there would be the equal concentration. This is expansion. This is contraction. Do you have got any question? So in diarrhea and vomiting, we have a loss of volume. Loss of volume. Yes, exactly. So okay. what's the treatment for that? We have to give a uh, normal water. saline. To we have to give normal saline to them. To them patient. Yeah, exactly. If BP is low, we also give the normal yes. saline. Yes. If we blood pressure is low when the patient comes to uh, your clinical, uh, you know, um, uh, practice, then you have to give the normal saline. If you know about uh, you know the other conditions like about the heart attack, you must have to take the history first. In the rapid first two three minutes, you have to take the history, and afterwards you have to give the normal saline. But don't give too much. In every condition. Not in every condition. First, you have to ask the patient. You have to take the history, and then if the blood pressure is low, you give the normal saline to just uh, you know um, to just revive them. Yeah, the exactly. So the normal saline is treatment for that patient. Exactly. The automatic contraction. I mean, if the person have high BP. If the person, okay. Now, now listen. This is the thing, na. Like this.
And Bilal must have known me. In Chinese, we call it Shutiao. So, Shutiao, we give Shutiao or the potato chips, which is salted. It's sodium, simple sodium. If we give simple table, table salt, it's just that simple. Or if you give many tone. Many tone is just like the normal saline, but in normal saline there is high isotonic volume, like solution. But what would happen in the many tone? Sorry, in many tone it will be increased sodium concentration, increased solute concentration. You get it? Okay. So this is the condition. You got to know about that. Any no. question? No. Easy? Yes. Moving on to the next thing. Just first, let me remove this thing so that you, you people might get some space. Okay, here is the same condition, same thing. You people have to tell me so that I won't tell you. In this, there is hypertonic volumetric contraction. What happened? What would happen? Contraction means decrease in volume. Decrease in volume. What would happen to that of the osmolarity? Increased. And when you know there is decrease here. There is decrease in extra cellular volume. Extra cellular volume. volume. What would happen? That water has gone out. You know, water has gone out. You have to also decrease that of the intracellular. Because water will Because water will have to equalize, you know. So osmolarity will decrease, volume will Osmolarity will increase. Osmolarity increase but volume is decreased. decreased. Hematocrit increase. Hematocrit increase. Volume and blood pressure and also the osmolarity. In this condition, osmolar uh, hematocrit remains the same. Why? Cause you could also have been asking about this condition. In this, what we said, there was sodium, no sodium retention. And water was going out. Along with that of the sodium was going, water was also going. Mm -hmm. That's why we said the cell would shrink. Okay? That's why we said that the, this RBCs will decrease. But like hematocrit will increase. But in this condition, I want you people to know that water is it's going good. out. Yeah. Letting it, letting the hematocrit remains same. same over here. Due to the reason that sodium is not going anywhere. Okay. Sodium is not going anywhere. But water is just going out. So this is the only condition. This is the only condition which the hematocrit same. remains the same. Okay? Yeah. And the blood pressure and the volume decreased. and osmolarity decreased. is increased. Decreased. And this is a condition which is present in the diabetes insipidus. In this, what happens is ADH. ADH is decreased. So water is not reabsorbed. Water is not reabsorbed. The so sodium concentration. Sodium water concentration is. Yes. This is the condition in which we can say that there is not enough ADH. Not enough ADH. We have been talking about the six different conditions in which we said that there is osmolarity, also volumetric expansion, then we said talk about also volumetric contraction, then we talked about hypotonic volumetric expansion, then we talked about hypotonic volumetric contraction, then hypotonic volumetric expansion and hypertonic. 
ਪਹਿਲਾਂ ਪੱਕਾ ਨਾਮ ਚੈੱਕ ਕਰ ਲੈਂਦੇ ਹਾਂ। ਆਹ ਜਿਹੜੀ ਵੀ ਜਾ ਕੇ ਬਿਨਾ ਬੰਦਾ ਪੜਦੇ। ਫਾਇਦਾ ਤੇ ਜਾਣੀ। ਠੀਕ ਹੈ। ਤੋਂ ਬਾਅਦ ਤੋਂ ਹੈ ਲੇਕਿਨ Okay and uh, now we will uh, discuss about the certain conditions i already told you in the last lectures um about uh, how to detect the hypotonic solution how to detect the hypotonic uh, condition how to detect the isotonic conditions and in what conditions these uh, things are applied so um, and now i will graphically represent the things and you people have to answer is just a quick review so that uh, you people must not forget these things forever okay now let's suppose we have got a certain condition in which there is volume and here is osmolarity first i will draw you know the normal body fluid compartment which is this extra cellular fluid and बॉडी Isotonic uh, solution has lost contraction. Okay. Then what will happen? Isotonic volumetric contraction. 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 Okay. What? First, tell me about the conditions. Like any case you observed, I want to know that. Like in case of diarrhea or vomiting. Yeah. Body fluid loss. Isotonic volumetric contraction. contraction would be which would be equal to the isotonic uh, solution loss and these are the condition in the diarrhea now the parameters you have to tell me about that that what about the hematocrit is increase and what about would be like in the diarrhea there would be outgoing of water, water plus sodium solutes yeah solutes just consider that it's sodium there are also uh, others but for example this is gone what about the volume is decreased and what about the bp also decreased and the osmolarity same so you people are it remains the same as it was cause uh, water has been gone out and solutes are also gone out so this you guys you detected and i really appreciate that now let's uh, let's move on to the next one which would not be isotonic for sure i'm not that much uh, i would not make that much easy for you so here is the condition and let me draw something don't look at your books what is this condition in which there is here volume you must have to know volume has increased and osmolarity has decreased just tell me hurry up what is this condition in which volume has increased but we can say that osmolarity has decreased hypotonic <coughs> what is volume expansion Ex volumetric expansion it would be hypotonic tonic volume expansion and i want you people to tell me about this hematocrit is decreased hematocrit is increased decreased. the volume has been increased oh, it's decreased decreased so the hematocrit will decreased decrease and what about the volume increased volume, volume has been increased and the blood pressure Increases. Increases. increases and what about the osmolarity decreases osmolarity decreases tell me about the condition it's like in and the hypotonic solution like the water has been increased Increased. but you said we said that adh when adh start excess uh, reabsorption of water tell me about the condition i want to write it first that i already Addison's disease. Yeah. Addison's, Addison's disease, disease is sodium, sodium retention, and uh, sodium cannot be retained. Yeah. Okay, so sodium is not retained. If sodium goes out, water also follows. So how so how will the volume no, increase? It has now expanded, expanded. increased. Mm. Okay. Yeah. 
okay but we said if we are not considering about the this dotted line we said this condition then there is isotonic condition normal isotonic condition no expansion no contraction there is isotonic condition so how we change the hypertonic volumetric uh, contraction to the isotonic volume by giving ADH. ADH. by giving the by treating the patient with the ADH. ADH so you got to know what why i was trying to confuse you in the graph yes it is that much easy that you get the two graphs you you know each and everything but you will get confused just because of the sake that you don't know how to detect the things okay this is the condition now the last Here is the condition. What would be this case? This is Mm-hmm. Osmolarity decrease, volume increase. Mm-hmm. Hypotonic. Okay. This is hypotonic. Volume. Expansion. Expansion. Why we said that? Because we don't see the extracellular, eh, intracellular. We see the extracellular. extracellular fluid. So extracellular fluid has been increased. We say there is expansion. And the osmolarity has been decreased. We say that this is the hypotonic solution. Okay, you get it? So this was the basic thing which I wanted to just test for a while. And uh, you people must know that there could be more than one conditions in the same um, situation in one day. Like if you, at one time the patient is taking, you know, the potato chips or uh, the lays, you know, I'm not advertising the brand, but still, you know, you are taking the stuff and afterwards what happens is you take a lot of water and you change, you eat something, other day you eat something. So this changes a lot. So it can be at a time in one day or in, in one week, there can be so many situations. So you have to detect what kind of situation it is at the moment. Okay? So what's the difference between that two graphs? In which so graph? Both are hypotonic volumetric expansion. Okay. It's it means that ADH has been increased and it is retained. Yes. Okay? ADH has increased and water has been uh, like water has been reabsorbed. It will go in this side to this side. Yes. And then because there is sodium it will go inside. Then why does it go inside in last graph? In this graph? Yes. Okay. This is the condition in which we say that water has gone inside. Yes. But due to the condition that here and here solutes are same. For example, there are two sodium here and there is also two sodium here. So why does water and new water comes and two, two water molecules? For example, there was one water molecule here and one we gave now. What happens is when they are already compensated, it is this already had, you know, uh, the same concentration as that of water. What will happen that this will go here. This, um, okay, let's make it so simpler. For example, if we gave water and to some extent, we have already added some use or we took the distilled water. We didn't intentionally give what? We didn't intentionally give, give the salt or the solutes. But to very little extent it, it is here. And now here would be two water molecules and here would be for example three sodium molecules. So here water is less because we are given the exact ratio. But to some extent we gave what? We gave little sodium or the solutes. This was at first this was hypertonic condition because we for example we had 3 sodium already 3 sodium inside. We gave water but that was that was okay. Let's, uh, let's say that there is 